sort of stalking its mum, and then it became distracted and is now eating a stick. Isn't that gorgeous? That is very special. That is not something one sees every day. It is not something one can hope to see every day. <laughs> so sweet. I suppose I should probably try and take a photograph so that we've got a record. <laughs> See the point you say, is this cub able to eat meat yet? The answer is definitely. Whether she is eating meat or not, I don't know. Can she eat meat? Definitely. I'm pretty sure she would be eating meat, she should be eating meat because her weaning time is not far off, or his or her weaning time. I don't know why I'm just automatically using the feminine pronoun. Could easily be a female. Of course, could just as easily be a male. I don't know why I feel like it's a female, but it might not be. So cedar point, yes, there will definitely be some meat eating going on. Okay, so we've got three spots there on the left. And three on the right. So her left is three and her right is three. So she would be known as a 3-3 three, three female because we're all m female. <gasps> Look. Male or female, definitely 3-3. Three, three. Now that won't change, of course. Now what's interesting, she is now, well, well let's call, I'm, I'm gonna call her she because that's what feels right for now. She is now four months old, plus minus, three and a half to four months. Oh, that's too sweet. And at three and a half to four months, she will still have her milk teeth. And I know that about when these animals lose their milk teeth, or you can see them, the next time you see a little tamba, no, no, not, yes, Tumba. Next time you see Tumba, you will notice that he, if he yawns in front of you, his big teeth are actually coming through. You can see the canines, the big canines coming through behind the little ones, and he's about 10 months old now. They tend to grow, obviously, a lot more slowly when they're little, and then suddenly they get bigger quite quickly. Peter, what a nice question. You say, is there any gender that is more important for the survival of the species for the leopards? I think in any species of mammal, it must surely be that you would hope to have more females than males. Because in most mammal species, the males play a role that can be confined largely to that of sperm donor. That's, I mean, on the surface of it, that's what it looks like. So if you were desperate to save a species, well, if you had lots of females and one male, uh, obviously one male can impregnate lots of females. But, uh, you know, if you've got one female and lots of males, it really doesn't help you at all. Because, you know, one female has to cover, carry the baby to term and then, of course, suckle it and nurse it and look after it. And it's going to take two years before she can have another one. And so females definitely. And in just about every single mammal species, because we are have a, an internal gestation, we don't lay eggs, that is the case. In birds, quite interestingly, it isn't the case. Because, of course, male birds or human beings can incubate and look after eggs. So you can, in theory then, have the same number of males and females, except that it still doesn't make... You still have to have the females, of course, to lay the eggs. And one male can still cover a lot of females. But in an egg-laying species, one female can be covered by a lot of males. <laughs>